Welcome to the Family Photos Tutorial. Okay, I have a question for you. Have you ever tried to take family photos that included small kids and struggled with keeping them still long enough to take the photo? One of the hardest things for a parent or a grandparent to do is keep kids still long enough to get the shot. And those photos are meant to last for generations. Well, there is another way. And this video is all about cooperating with the natural energy of kids, instead of fighting against the urge to keep moving. What you will gain from this video are new tools to help you create non-posed family photos that are spontaneous, full of laughter, fun, and full of energy. I'm sure that you'll also find that this way is much easier than most other forms of family pictures. In this video, we'll be using a zoom lens, photographing outside in a park with evening light, our camera is set to aperture priority and an aperture of f5.6. We'll also be adjusting ISO and white balance to get the perfect shot. So gather the family together in a nice park and let's create some memories that will last throughout the generations. Okay, now I'm in the position where I want. I have my family who's going to be photographed and they have a really cute young daughter who's very active. So this is going to be perfect for what I want to show you. Now the philosophy behind this type of photography is anything goes. I want them to have fun, I want them to be relaxed and no stress. The last thing I want is a posed photo. Now if you do of course want a posed photo then that's what photo studios are for. Uh, however, in this instance, we want to show the vitality of the family, show how they interact, and really just have a lot of fun. So, I'm going to take some pictures, and after each shot, I'm going to review and explain what I see and how I can help you get the same results. So, before I start, I'm in aperture priority mode, and I'm choosing f5.6 or f4, both are okay. Uh, I don't want... Um, the depth of field to be so shallow that one person is sharp and the uh, person behind them is out of focus. So that's where f4 and f5.6 is a good average f-stop to use. Now with regards to exposure compensation, usually uh, you don't need any. However, if you feel that your pictures are a little dark or a little bright, depending on where the sun is, feel free to adjust exposure compensation to plus 0.3, minus 0.3, uh, it'll be dependent on the situation of the light. Okay, with regards to zoom lens, I chose a zoom lens that's equivalent to 70 to 200. That's a normal zoom lens that you would purchase as an additional lens in your camera collection. And the reason I like a zoom lens is because I can go really tight on the family or maybe have a little bit of a slight wider view so I can see the environment. And in this situation, it's a park and a playground. So, with that type of flexibility on my zoom lens, it's going to work out really well. Now, with regards to focus, normal focus is fine. Uh, unlike sports photography, the, uh, the little child is probably not going to be running so fast toward my camera that uh, autofocus, uh, normal autofocus uh, will not work. So, keep it on normal autofocus, so that's perfectly fine. And if you feel that you have enough space in your memory card, which you probably do, don't be afraid to use rapid fire. Rapid fire will help you to get the shot because, you know, facial expressions can change from picture to picture. And when you're doing rapid fire, you can get the shot really well because you're almost guaranteed out of all of those pictures you just took to get one where the person's face looks great. Now, because they're a little distance away, I'm actually going to get up and move around. Of course, one thing to keep in mind is to always shoot low. When you are lower than the people, it makes everything look better. One thing is to always make sure that the parents are totally involved with the kid. Uh, that seems obvious, but uh, sometimes it's hard to keep uh, parents concentrated on their child. But with both of them really focused on the child, you're going to get some great shots. A 
Another tip that I like to do is with regards to white balance, is I usually go to cloudy or shade to really warm up the picture. It looks really nice, especially with children. Now with regards to ISO, if you feel that it's getting darker uh, and your pictures are starting to get a little blurry, then make sure you increase your ISO, maybe from 800 to 1600 or maybe even more if you need to. It's critical that you have good, sharp photos for these pictures. So I got a nice picture here where the dad is in behind looking at the child and also mom's in the foreground. Now we can't see her face, but that's okay. She's in the picture. And we don't need to always see all three faces at one time. It's not critical. In fact, sometimes it's nice where uh, one parent is in focus, the other person is maybe behind or in front and they, they can be a little bit out of focus. That's all right. As long as they're together, it looks good. Also, another tip is to change it up a little bit. Now, we're usually used to photographing in a horizontal way because it's easier. However, getting vertical shots is really valuable for many reasons. One is uh, verticals work really well for framing when you want to blow up your picture fairly large and put it on a wall. And uh, also, uh, they work really well when printed out as four by sixes. So, Get shots uh, horizontal, but also don't forget to get vertical shots as well. Now, swing pictures are usually pretty hard. The reason that they're difficult is one person will be uh, up high, the other person will be low on the swing. That's where rapid fire comes in really nicely. Just put it on rapid fire and shoot away. One of the shots will work out. Now, do you see how the light is shining on the backs of their heads? This is called backlighting. A classic family shot is to get backlight like this and to have both parents grab the child and swing. It looks great all the time. Okay, take a look at this shot. Uh, while Dad's face really isn't in the picture, um, all the focus goes to the child, and that's really good. It works perfectly. I think this family is going to be really happy with these photos. So, just to conclude, when you're photographing families, try to find an environment that kids would normally be in, like a park or a playground like this, and uh, make sure that um, you're photographing sort of in the evening when the light is getting a little bit softer. That's a really great time, especially because you can make use of that backlight that we saw over there. Remember, you can't direct kids. You just have to go with the flow. Walk around, make sure you're moving around with the family. Get as many pictures as possible and just shoot like crazy. Uh, keep that camera on rapid fire and one of those photos in this series will be a winner. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got a lot of value out of it. Now, there's so much more I'd like to tell you about digital photography. And while I didn't hold anything back, there's only so much I could really share with you in such a short video. And that's why I've recorded an entire video course about incredible photos with your digital camera. So if you'd like to find out more about my digital photography course, you'll find more information right under this video. So take a look at my full digital photography course, and I hope to see you there.